another training video here at Emergency Reporting and today we're going to be talking about your CAD link or if you're going to be getting a CAD link this training is for you. My name is Josh Bradley I'm the Interface Project Manager here at Emergency Reporting and I welcome you today to this great video on CAD or Computer Aided Dispatch and how it integrates with your ERS system. So let's get started. Okay, before we dive deep into the CAD integration, we need to go over a couple definitions. First, I want to talk about XML, which is Extendable Markup Language. It's basically code for computers to talk to computers. But the code is also pretty readable by the end user, and I will show you this in just a couple minutes. But basically, this is how the CAD data gets into your ERS system. The dispatch incident number, or what is called the dispatch run number sometimes, is a unique number generated by dispatch in your CAD call. Sometimes it matches your agency run number, but most of the time the command center has their own running dispatch count that's different from your agency count. Your agency run number, or your agency incident number, is specific for your agency, or your specific number schema. We do have the ability to capture your agency number from dispatch in the CAD call file. But not all vendors can send this node in the XML file. You'll need to check with dispatch. There are a couple API routes to get data into your account, and we'll talk about those right now. And the two options are Web Services Direct, or WSD, or Flat File Parser, what we call FFP. Basically, when the CAD system generates an XML file, it'll send it to our web service address right into our database and then eventually right into your account. This usually takes three to five seconds on transport. So let's talk a little bit about NFPA 1710 and 1720. These are important times that we can capture from CAD into your basic four apparatus page. We can capture alarm date to dispatch date or alarm processing time, dispatch date to en route date, your turnout time, en route date to arrive date, your travel time, and more nodes. We can capture the cancel date, the cleared scene date, the at destination date, the cleared destination date, and of course in quarters and in service. In addition to these times, we can also capture the response mode. Not all CAD vendors can send the response mode, so you will need to check with your vendor. Now we're going to dive into the system. This is my test account and we're going to be using this to look over some CAD items that need to be in place before you can really get the full benefits from the CAD system at the dispatch center. So we're going to start out in the administration section. You're going to have to have administration privileges to go in here and uh, change the settings that I'm going to show you that need to be in place. The first area we're going to look at, or the main area actually we're going to look at, is the interface settings. In the first section I want to show you in the interface settings is a submissions page. And this is where that XML comes in. And uh, here's some test submissions that I sent uh, yesterday. And I'm actually going to open up one of these submissions. And you can do this as well. I'm going to go ahead and download that. Go to my download folder and open that up in Safari. Safari, Chrome, or IE can open up this XML since it is valid XML. And you can see the whole gamut of the, the XML event that came down for this particular test call that I sent. And it looks kind of confusing at first, but once you get to know it, it's pretty, it's pretty readable. And uh, that's why it's, uh, XML is both readable by machines and by humans. You look at a lot of code out there, and it's, and it's kind of hard to read, especially code on the back end for uh, other applications. So for this test account, I sent the uh, dispatch incident number. Um, NEU1234 and I actually forced the agency incident number down on this as well, 228. Some vendors do not send the agency incident number so when the CAD call comes in it just populates up to the next highest number in your system. I also sent the primary station down and also the incident type. And here's all the apparatus events that came down in this CAD call. You can see the alarm and the dispatch and the route and arrived. And then down below, uh, the location came in from this test call and this XML. Um, I have a district in there, a zone, and the location type code, and the state, and the city, and the zip. And actually, I sent the aid given and received code 
of AID. So again, this all depends on what vendor you have in providing all these nodes. We have over 83, I think we're up to 88 nodes that we can receive from a CAD vendor. Not all CAD vendors can send that many nodes, uh, so you need to check with your vendor to see uh, what's possible, or you can uh, give us a call at ERS and we can track that down as well. Okay, so back to the main submissions page here. A couple of items to notice as well too. If you're missing a call and dispatch says we sent it, one of the first places to look again is this submissions page. And you can look by the uh, dispatch incident number here. Again, this is the, the dispatch incident number and not your agency number. Or if you're getting the agency uh, uh, ID, you can look for that as well. And if you still don't see it in the system, you can always copy this dispatch incident number. Let's let's just say you're, it's just, it's just not on this first incident grid view page, and you can't find it. You can always go advanced search and come down here to there it is right there. I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in the dispatch incident number and hit search and it comes up. Okay, so we're back out here on the administration page. Let's go back into submissions one more time and I want to point out one more thing here and that's the log date of the submission that came in from CAD. The log date here shows 09, 16 hours and this is specific time. This is not the time of the CAD call that came in where your agency is located at. For instance, if you're in on the East Coast, it'd be three hours ahead. So I would just add the three hours of 12, 16, 48 is when that, uh, when, our, when our system logged the date of when that XML came in. Okay, so we're going to go back out here to administration. The next biggest area that I want to point out is apparatus mapping. Uh, we get calls, I get calls all the time saying that my times are not in uh, basic four. The incident came, but my apparatus did not show up in basic four. And the first place uh, that I tell folks to go is into apparatus mapping. So let's go in here into apparatus mapping. And here's the main CAD apparatus mapping page. You'll see in this column here, this is the CAD apparatus ID or the CAD name. So at dispatch, they may have different IDs in the CAD system for your apparatus than what your ID is in the ERS system. For instance, uh, they could have 2373, but your ER name is actually E2373. So now when a CAD call comes down with E2373, it will match up to your ER E2373 and will populate into basic four. So let's say you have a new apparatus that uh, just came in from dispatch. You just started uh, your CAD integration and Battalion 3 hasn't responded yet on a call, but they, the first time he responded was today and he's not mapped yet in ERS. So all that you need to do here is go into edit, look for your e, ER name in the pull downs list and uh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and pick this. BAT3 at dispatch actually means uh, B2312 in your ER system. Go ahead and hit save. So now every time dispatch sends BAT3, it'll be mapped to B2312. So this is a really an important area, uh, especially when you're getting up and going with your CAD. And if you don't have apparatus showing up in basic four and the incident is there, this is the first place to go and look for any uh, apparatus that haven't been mapped yet from CAD into your system. Another section that uh, you may want to check for mapping is the incident type mapping. I'll go ahead and click in here. So again, here is the CAD code column and here is the actual infers value column. So CAD may have something like gas or EMS for a CAD code for an incident type, but that's not the actual infers uh, incident code uh, that needs to be in your system. So if you want to have EMS just be generally, I'll pull down the list here, well let's just make it a 321 here. So anytime CAD sends EMS, we're going to go ahead and make it 321 for the incident type. Okay, so now anytime the dispatch center sends EMS as a CAD code, it'll be mapped up with 321 for the inference type. 
Now this is up to you if you want to map these, but a lot of times what you arrive at is different from what you are dispatched as. A lot of times you're called to a structure fire, a full code 3 response, and when the first unit gets there or the battalion chief gets there, it is actually an overheated car or a, a barbecue gone south, and it's not an actual structure fire. So um, it will stay structure fire though, so when you come back, um, you will need to change it to the actual infers code that you arrived at. Um, this is why uh, some chiefs do not map the CAD code to keep it blank for the uh, folks to fill it out on their own. Go back here to administration. Another area I want to show you is venue mapping. Uh, some CAD vendors, uh, some CAD systems do not have the ability to send the city um, the z or the zip. So in venue mapping, there may be a code though that they send that always matches up to a certain uh, city, state, and zip. So for instance, the CAD value of 40, 425, if they always send that in the CAD call, it will always be Shenandoah Junction in Western Virginia with the zip code of 95959. Again, this is my test account, so this is not a real, a real address. So we're back here on the interface settings page again. I'm going to go ahead and so, show you station mapping. Again, the CAD name, that XML that I showed you, uh, station 1 came in, but really I have it mapped to station 20. Again, it's really easy. You just go in here, and when the CAD name of 1 comes down, you want it to map to station 20. So every time a CAD call comes in with the letter, with the number 1, your correct station will populate up here in the station field. The same goes for shift or platoon. Again, there is a field for that for us to capture. Again, I'd like to reiterate that not all CAD systems can send the shift or platoon. Now if we go back home here and click on an incident, we're going to go ahead and click into basic for the apparatus page. Now there are a couple ways you can get personnel into the apparatus uh, from a CAD call. One is using the user menu, and I'll show you that in just a couple seconds. And also the other way is using the daily roster. So if you have daily rosters in your system, if you have an open roster for the day or for the time period of that CAD call, so let's just say uh, a CAD call came in uh, on this date uh, between, you know, for 24 hours between 725 and 726 on apparatus 2361, these folks here would come across and populate into basic four with the apparatus. The other option and again, I have to reiterate that some CADs do not do this. It is uh, sending users from CAD. So as you can see here, there's some CAD names of 5, 7. They may have a, an ID. Usually it's a numerical ID uh, for that person. So for, for this test account here, there's a CAD name of 5. And every time 5 comes down that's attached to an apparatus, Albert will populate uh, into that apparatus for that call. Again, it's really easy here. You just go here and edit, and you can change. Well, we'll just change it to mine. Right now, I have a lot of uh, users that are archived on this test account, so I don't have that many to choose from. But if it was a regular account, you could choose from the list um, for that CAD name for them to come in for that call. Again, rosters is a, is a powerful tool to have, especially when you have CAD. And when CAD does not send down the personnel, you can still get them to auto-populate in if you have an open roster for that day. I'm going to go back here into basic one and here's the incident number that came in from CAD 228 and here's a dispatch run number. Now if CAD does not send the incident number and some CADs do not it will just auto populate up to the next highest number so the next call that will come in will be 229. Now I get calls now and then from folks who say we are at 228 and it went to 293 and it jumped a whole bunch of uh, incident numbers. 
That is usually because someone went in and put 292 and saved the incident. And so when the next CAD call came in, it just went up to 293 because it based it off to 292 was the was the was the highest number uh, for the incident year. So that's something you got to watch when CAD does not send down uh, the incident number or what I call force feed the incident number. It will just auto populate up up to the highest one, and if you have a wrong high number in there, it'll just keep uh, populating off of that start high number and continue on. Okay, we're just about finished up here. There's just one more point I want to touch on. A lot of times in our support, we get calls that are saying, hey, I'm missing my CAD calls. Well, there are first a couple things that you should do before you call support. One again is go into your submissions page under administration and look for the dispatch incident number that you're missing. Again, you'll want to look at the log date of when that submission came in. Remember, it is specific time, so wherever you're at, minus or add hours according to your time zone. You can also again download that submission and look for any missing times or any other information that you think should be there. If you don't see the dispatch incident number that was provided you, well, give dispatch a call and have them resend it again. If you still don't see it, then it would be a good time to give us a call at ERS. Well, that's it. You made it through another training here at Emergency Reporting. Thank you for joining me today. Again, my name is Josh Bradley, and I am the Interface Project Manager. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to email me at josh at emergencyreporting.com. Thank you, and have a great day.